Hey everyone, let's color grade this image to make it look like a proper sunset shot. For this we will be using Photoshop and if you want to follow along you can find a link to the raw file in the description of this video. So let's begin. This will be a lot of fun. We are working with two different HDR images, with this one being the base shot and since I want to have a sunstar right there in the center I'm going to merge the base image with this image. The reason I'm not just using this shot is because I want the foreground to have a stronger focus on those sunflowers. What we are doing here is called perspective blending, but more on that later. First we have to do the raw adjustments. Let's start by changing the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape and you can see this has a very big impact already, making the darkest parts brighter and also adding a lot of saturation to this image. So that's great. Then let's expand the basic tab. I am not going to change the white balance. If you want, you could bring up the temperature giving this some more intense sunset colors, but I want to rely on the split toning later on in the raw editing process. So let's reset the white balance. Plus I also want to have those colder color tones up there in the sky as well. So that's great. What I want to do first here is to just bring up the exposure, restoring a lot of details in the foreground, since before that it was just underexposed and it didn't look good. This is much better, but of course raising the exposure blows out the sky like that. We can pretty easily fix that since we're working with an HDR image and therefore just bring down the highlights. I think that's a good spot right there. You see the overexposure is gone, we still have a bit of underexposure right there in the foreground, but that's not a big deal. We can fix that by bringing up the shadows and we can also bring up the blacks. Perfect. Now with the exposure balanced, I also want to add a bit of texture, which will just make the smallest details slightly sharper. Then I'm going to drop the clarity and the dehaze, which will give this image a very, very subtle soft look. And of course we want to bring up the vibrance slightly just to push the saturation some more. So that's the image after the base adjustments. You can see we started from this with a rather unexposed shot and ended up with this with much more details in the foreground. So that's perfect. Now we do want to target a few things locally and that means we need to do some masking. Let's open up the masking panel and there's actually not that much going on. I just want to work on the sky. What I want to do here is to target those blue color tones in the sky. And for that reason, let's use a color range mask. With the color range mask active, I'm just clicking right there in the blue part of the sky. And you can see we are selecting a little more than just the blue part. So what I want to do is to just use the refine slider, bringing it down until we get a proper selection here without affecting those clouds. Also, I want to make use of that subtract button right there, choose linear gradient and just take away a part from the selection from the bottom part, like this. And once we set up this mask, I'm going to drop the exposure, adding more contrast to the sky. We can not only lower the exposure, but also the blacks to really only target the darkest parts and make them darker but I think this is looking pretty good like this. Right away, let's create another linear gradient for the sky. I'm going to slightly tilt it like this. And what I want to do with this one is to just introduce some clarity to make the clouds pop. Perfect, maybe bring it down a notch, but this is looking good. And that's already it for the masking adjustments. You can see we only targeted the sky for a few more local adjustments and we went from this to this with a lot more contrast. So that's looking great. Now the fun part with the color grading. First off, let's head into the color mixer tab. I do want to start with the hue. What I want to do here is to bring down the yellow hue. This in turn will make the sky appear a little more orange as well as the sunflowers. So we don't want to overdo it to make things look unnatural like this, but just a tiny amount will help quite a bit. Also, I'm going into the saturation tab to bring up the orange saturation and the yellow saturation. 
uh, I think I might also want to bring up the green saturation and then let's bring down the blue saturation. Perfect. We can also head into the luminance tab and further darken the blue sky by bringing down the blue luminance. Wonderful. Then comes the biggest change with the split toning. For this shot, the most important aspect of the split toning are the highlights. These will have the greatest impact on the shot. So, since we are working with the sunset image, we want to have warm highlights. This means we want to set up the hue first. Let's choose a rather warm color tone like this. What I want to do is to really pump up the saturation. And you can immediately see the difference as I bring up the slider. This works perfectly well. And the reason for that is because this is a sunset shot. Doing this on a daytime shot would look very, very strange, but here we can do this without it looking weird. We can further improve this effect by going into the midtones. And again, let's set up the hue first, choosing a warm color tone, and again, bring up the saturation. At this point, you could go higher again if you want. For me, this reduces the blue tones a little too much, so I just want to use a low amount of saturation just around eight maybe. And then I also want to go into the shadows because as I said, I want to have some blue tones in here and the shadows are perfect for that. So let's bring up the hue to a cold color tone and just raise the saturation a tiny bit. We don't want to make this too strong, otherwise it would look unnatural again, but this is looking great. So let me deactivate the split toning real quick so you can see the difference. We went from this to this with just a few tiny adjustments. Now, one more thing about the color grading I want to do is in the calibration tab. And here we can work on the blue primary hue and saturation. So bringing the hue down will make the yellow orange color tones a little more intense, but it will also slightly shift the hue. So let's just bring it down a bit and you can see how those sunflowers will turn a little more orange. So just be very, very careful with this one. But we can safely go around minus 10 maybe. And then I'm raising the saturation to make the colors pop. Perfect. At this point, I also want to add a little bit of vignetting. So let's go into the effect step and just bring down the vignetting slider. Done. Finally, we can do the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key so you can see which areas are affected. And then just bring up the sharpening. And that's the image after the raw adjustments. Let's compare to before again. So we went from this to this. Quite the transformation. As I said in the intro, we are working with two images. So we have done the raw adjustments for the base image, but we still need to do the adjustments for our second image with the sun star. Of course, you want to have the same settings on this image. So what I want to do is to select both of them down there with the thumbnails, right click. Here we choose synchronize settings. Make sure to check all and hit OK. And now we have the same raw settings on both images. Then again, select both and click on open objects. Now we want to do some perspective blending. This can be a bit tricky depending on the shot, but for this scene, I think it's quite easily done. So here I have the base image. We want to switch over to our second image with the sun star. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. I'm also going to grab the clone stem tool. I want to go right at the border of the image, hold down the Alt key, and click right here on the horizon level of this shot to copy this area, just like that. Then let's head back to our base image. We want to create a new layer. And now we're just, again, with the clone stem tool, painting in the area from the other image on the horizon level. So I'm going to go close to the border of the image. Now I'm just going to brush in the area from our Sansa image, just like that. 
This might be tricky on some areas, especially up here with the clouds, as you can see. So just be careful. We need to fix that later using something like the spot healing brush. But so far it's looking quite good. I'm not going to paint too high up here. I much rather work on the foreground. It's important to get in all those sun rays, of course. And make sure you don't cut off any flowers. Let's see if I can find an example, just like this one right here. I think I'm just going to paint over it. So we get something that looks natural without any strange glitches going on. And I think we are done. So let me deactivate the upper layer to see the difference from before to after. And that's it for the perspective blending. Next up, let's clean up this shot. I'm going to merge those two layers by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And I want to create a guideline. So I'm clicking on that ruler up there. If you don't see that ruler, hit Ctrl R. This will make it visible. And then I'm just creating a guideline like this because I want to straighten the horizon. And to do that, I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation. Right click, choose warp. And then I'm just trying to make the horizon straight by dragging around the image like that. Maybe try to place the sun star a little more in the center. But all in all, this looks quite good. And then let's fix a few other things using the spot healing brush. I want to make it a very clean looking shot. So I'm going to remove most of those grassy things standing out above the horizon. Okay, that should be fine. Then I want to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So let's create a new layer. Usually I would use the TK panel for that, but I think we can do this in a different way. So first I want to target the shadows and make them slightly darker. I'm going to hit Shift Alt 2, which will select the brightest highlights of the image. Then I'm going to hit Control Shift I, which will invert the selection. And in turn, that just means we are inverting the highlight selection and in turn get a selection for the shadows. With that selection active, let's select our new layer and hit the layer mask icon. And what we have done here is to basically create a luminosity mask. Now on that new layer, let's change the blending mode to overlay and then grab the brush tool by pressing B. You can see I have set the brush opacity to something really low around 15% and change the foreground color to, let's say, a very dark blue tone, maybe not that saturated. Okay. And what we want to do next is to paint over the darker areas like up there in the sky to dodge them. You can see if I paint over the clouds, only the dark parts will be affected. So that's exactly what we want. If we can also burn the shadows a little bit, but I'm going to lower the opacity for that even more because you need to be really, really careful here. The reason I'm using a, a third party plugin here usually is because I can be way more precise, selecting those areas way, way easier. But as you can see, this works as well. Then I want to kind of make those yellow tones brighter. Let's see how we can do that. Again, I'm creating a new layer and let's go to select and choose color range. And with that window opened, I'm going to click right here in the sunflowers. This will give us a pretty good selection actually. Could bring up the fuzziness a bit, just like that. Hit okay. And again, with that selection, click on the layer mask icon. Again, we want to change the blending mode to overlay. This time, since we want to dodge, we are going to set the foreground color to white in order to make things brighter. We can also safely bring up the opacity here and then just paint in a few times over those yellow flowers. Just giving them some highlights, especially at the top where the sun is supposed to hit them. Actually, the opacity might be a bit too much, so let's reduce it. And again, start painting over them. Wonderful. Next up, let's create another new layer and zoom in. 
I'm really not happy with this area right here. So what I want to do is, again, I'm using the brush. Let's bring up the brush opacity. And I'm going to pick a color tone from right here by holding down the Alt key and clicking in there. Then I'm simply going to brush over this bright blob like this. This is looking weird without a very bright spot in the center. So I'm going to change the foreground color to white. And let's make the brush size a little smaller. And we also want to adjust the hardness of the brush. So we don't want to go too crazy, but I think something around 50% hardness should be fine. And then I'm just, again, brushing in there once right in the center. And I'm making the brush bigger and make it softer. Bring down the brush opacity a bit. And again, brush in here, maybe a few times. And this way, it just looks like a better sunstar overall. We went from this to this. It's way more subtle effect, so that helps. We can also add a little bit of glow around the sun. So again, new layer and go with the hard light blending mode. Grab the brush, pick a warm colored tone from around the sun and make sure to bring down the brush opacity again. And I'm making the brush bigger and use a very, very soft brush, of course. And then I'm just painting in there once. And at this point, we are pretty much done. I do, however, want to enchant this shot some more using the Nick Collection plugin. So I'm going to merge everything, hitting Control, Alt, Shift, E. And let's head to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. And what I want to use here is the polarization effect, just bringing it up slightly. And I also want to add another filter. Go to the Brilliance Warmth effect, introducing some more warmth for those intense sunset colors. But that's about it. With those two filters applied, let's hit OK. And that's it for editing this image. I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.